Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back here today for another game review and a special Kickstarter review. And today I'm very excited to check out Lots, a competitive game of tower building for one to four players. Age is eight plus, it'll take about 20 to 30 minutes to play, and it's from Royal N Games. And in Lots, this is a game that I saw at Origins, and I got a chance to sit down and try out the game, and I said, wow, spoilers, I really stick and like this game, do you want a Kickstarter video for it? Uh, so yeah, it's a really light, simple, interesting stacking game in which you are going to be stacking these big chunky blocks and trying to construct a building while trying to line up colors and complete rows very light very simple i've already spoiled it is it very good yeah you know it is but let's let's go and check it out anyway all right then we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of lots so before we get started i do want to mention this is obviously a prototype i have right here so take everything you see here with a grain of salt uh so first and foremost you have a handy dandy rule booklet probably about eight to 15 pages somewhere in there very well done pictures illustrations examples lots of good stuff big thumbs up on the rule booklet there so in lots what you're trying to do is score the more, most points as you're building up this building you're all going to be working together building up this building but obviously you're trying to score your own victory points because the first person to x number of points which is actually really cleverly marked uh, on the scoreboard will be the winner of the game now there's three different ways you're gonna be able to score points in this game and the first and most simple way and I'll just bring it up right now are cards you're going to start the game with one action card and you can acquire more of these action cards throughout the game at certain spots around the board and I'll explain how those spots work in a second because not everybody gets them so the cards are really self-explanatory score half the points another player just scored that one I imagine in the final version is gonna have rounded up rounded down on your turn score the block you play as if it were the color of your choice score two times points for matching colors on this turn so there are going to be different ways you can score points you can only ever have two of these at one time but you're going to want to spend them because they're going to get you points so the other two ways to score points the first one is to complete a row so we're going to be building right here and if it came to my turn and i place this green right here i have completed the bottom row which means i'm going to get five points you get five points for completing a row and five points is a good chunk of points there's one other way to score points aside from completing rows and playing cards and that is matching a color so if i happen to play this yellow on my turn right there i would score two points because it's touching one other yellow on the bottom so two points for me now let's pretend it's the next guy's turn and he does this he's going to score to four points because he's touching two yellows and if somebody was able to do like this next time they would score you know uh, i think they still score four uh, no they score six so the more of a particular color you're touching the more points you get so if green went here they would score two points because they're touching one green so those are the three ways to score the points let's show you exactly how the game works so on your turn well at the beginning of the game you're going to roll the dice and you're going to get whatever pops up so i'd start with an orange and then you're on your turn, you are going to roll the die, and you are going to then play one of the two you have. So roll one, play one. Pretty simple, I'll play the green. But let's speed things up, and let's say that uh, blue is all the way over here, and I'm at five or whatever, and I play this green down. So I would score two points. Now, I am the last person to get to this purple cube, which means I have now earned the purple cube. That is also how the construction action cards work as well. The last player to reach that space gets the points. Also, the other thing that I want to mention is that if you ever land on someone, then you're supposed to push them forward so you can never share space with anybody else. Now, the purple cube is really cool because on my next turn, in addition to playing a tile, so let's say I could do uh, this, I also get to play a purple cube if I like, and I would play it right there, which would complete the bottom row and make me happy because I'd get five points. So those purple cubes can really help you out, but as they help you out, other people are then going to start getting them. So now the blue would be the one who would get the purple cube and the next card that popped up. Now, what can happen sometimes is you might get all crazy. You might get all willy-nilly. Uh, oh, and the, the big rule that I forgot to mention, which I feel like most people know, is you have to keep it within, obviously, the confines of your property area. So let's just say I started doing this, and then someone was doing this, and they just knocked something over. If you knock something over, you still have to put on your piece. You absolutely still have to put your piece on, but you score absolutely no points, no matter what you did, and you just kind of take everything else off to the side as best as you can. Uh, so essentially, you're just losing points. You're not getting any points at all but anywho that's what you can do with lots you can do that until someone is able to reach the uh the number of points which is on the side of the board at which point they will be the winner and that in a nutshell is what you can do inside of lots all right then lots a competitive game of tower building from royal end games coming to a kickstarter near you very very soon i'll be sure to post that kickstarter link down below 
What are my final thoughts? Let's go to the pros. Let's go to the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody. For a variety of different reasons. One to four players, or a little bit of a restricted player count. Also, the solo version of the game, I thought it was okay. It's not something I'd want to play again, but I definitely think it's aimed at more of the younger crowd. And I didn't have a younger crowd to play the solo game, so I can't really comment on it too much past that. Um, another con, obviously the player count, you're used to uh, stacking games. A lot of stacking games can accommodate pretty high player counts. This not one of them. Next con I have in this game, and I'm looking at it purely from an adult perspective at this point, is that if you're looking at this as a potential like light filler weight game to play on a game night, you do need to know that this is definitely on the lighter side, and there's going to be other stacking games out there that are going to have more meat on the bones than I think the a little bit more acquiescing. Wow, that was a fancy word, which I misused. Mispronounced. I think I used it right, but mispronounced. Uh, any other cons that I have with the game? Um, oh, the catch-up mechanism. So the catch-up mechanism, I think it's going to be something that you really, really like or you really hate. And it depends who you're playing with. If you're playing with kids, I think you're really going to love it. And this is actually dipping more into the pros because I really like how they did it. Uh, because it's going to allow kids to have a chance to come back. And they really feel like they can. And they're never going to feel like they're going to be completely out of the game because they'll have cubes and they'll have extra cards. But for adults, it completely changes the flow of the game a little bit because it kind of is like, uh, I don't want to be in first. I absolutely do not want to be in first because I want to try and be, you know, getting those cards and getting those cubes because those cubes can really help you out, especially if you set yourself up. Like if you can set it up that if you get a cube, you'll be able to slot it into a place. Uh, there's, there's some definite strategy going on there. But you do need to know with adults that catch up mechanism is pretty powerful. Any other cons that I have? No, moving on to the pros. I really like lots. I thought it was a really stinking fun game. I tried it at Origins. I was like, I want to play this more. I played it with my kids. Kids loved it. Played it in my class. My class loved it. Uh, played it with adults. The adults I liked all enjoyed it and were very surprised by the level of depth in the game for being what is clearly a children slash family game. Because there's some stacking games out there that are not children slash family game. They're purely, uh, they're, they're obviously aimed at the older crowd. And they are going to do more. You're going to have more choices. But... For what's inside this box and for who it's aimed at and for who all can play it, I think Lost is going to be a big stinking hit. I really like this game. I definitely want to get a final copy of this game. I'd love to have one in my classroom and at home, but, you know, it's easy because I can just take it here and take it there because I know my kids are going to like it. My wife liked the game as well, and she's not a particularly big fan of uh, stacking games, and she also enjoyed it a whole heck of a lot. And in the end, I really like lots. This is an easy recommendation. Do you have kids between the age of four? You know, even at four, they're still going to have fun playing with the components and stacking it up and playing with mom or dad. Four to any age period, I think they're going to like this game. It's a lot of fun. Uh, one that I have a feeling is going to be getting played a lot in my house and at school. So check it out. That is lots a competitive game of tower building from Royal End Game. Some really cool cards, some really cool shapes. I, mean, uh, I did see some of the, the components, uh, the final artwork, really liked it as well. But there you go. If you enjoy what I'm doing, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. If you want to support the channel, click on that little Amazon Associates link down below. And in the comments below, let me know if you could build one thing onto your house what would it be within reason you know obviously don't say i'm gonna build a third story or something crazy like that something easy you could do maybe you could do it on a lazy saturday for me personally it's either a fence i really need a fence because my kids always want to let my dog out uh, so i'd love to have a fence or a shed a shed in the back because then i can actually start working on trying to fix a garage door we got two garage doors only one of them works who cares though let me know in the comments below what's the thing you want to build around the house and as always thanks for your time youtube